The rate of reaction in chemistry is incredibly important because some reactions can take very long periods of time, for example substances that rust. Other reactions can be incredibly quick and powerful and explosions are common examples of those types of reactions. So when we define the rate of a reaction, the first thing is we need to understand some notation. When something is drawn in square brackets, it refers to the concentration of that substance. So this over here would be read as the concentration of hydrogen. So we define the rate of a reaction as the rate at which the concentration of either our reactants or the products changes. We can define it by either reaction, by either reactants or products because we know that the conversion between them is governed by a fixed ratio, so the rate of change for both will be equal. Now we know from collision theory that in order for a reaction to take place, the particles must collide with each other and all particles are constantly colliding and only a small fraction of those are actually effective collisions. So most of the changes that we can make to a chemical reaction change the number of total collisions which as a result increases the number of effective collisions. The first change that we can make or the first factor that affects the rate of a reaction is the nature of reactants. That basically just means the phase that those reactants are in. We remember from the particle model of matter that the phase can either be solid, liquid or gas. We know that there are other phases but these are the ones we will be dealing with. We also know that particles in gases move much faster than those in liquids and also those in solids. Since they move faster they have more collisions. More collisions means more effective collisions. So we say that gases react faster than liquids which react faster than solids. When we're talking about surface area what we are saying is that if you have a square of substance that is trying to react the reaction can only take place on the surface. The reaction cannot take part with one of the molecules in the middle because it is not in contact. So when we increase the surface area, if you continually cut the substance down into smaller and smaller pieces, you're increasing the surface area where reactions can happen, thereby increasing the number of collisions, thereby increasing the number of effective collisions. So what we'll often say is that when we say we increase the surface area, we are increasing the amount of contact surface area. So therefore you will find that when we have a substance that is in powder form, meaning it is very, very small pieces. It has an incredibly big surface area, therefore there is space for more collisions and more effective collisions. Increasing the concentration and increasing the pressure of a substance are both very similar in that they are increasing the number of particles per unit area. So if you only have four particles in a certain area and they are bouncing around, they will eventually collide with each other but the number of collisions will be low and therefore the number of effective collisions will be even lower. Whereas if you increase the number of particles either by increasing the concentration or by increasing the pressure pushing them closer together you will increase the number of collisions and therefore the number of effective collisions. A temperature increase increases the speed at which particles move around in a container. Since they move around faster they would therefore collide with each other more often. Since they collide more often, there would be more effective collisions. And finally, the catalyst provides an easier path for the reaction to happen. And this one just increases the number of effective collisions without necessarily changing the number of collisions. So when we talk about factors that affect the rate of a reaction, they are all essentially doing the same thing except for the catalyst. These five are increasing the number of collisions. By increasing the number of collisions, they will increase the number of effective collisions. The catalyst, on the other hand, actually increases the rate of effective collisions.